Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of Wandering in Darkness. Today I'm going to be talking about my understanding of postmodernism and kind of how I use that term and what it means to me. The philosopher Jean Baudrillard, a famous writer on the topic of postmodernism, explained postmodernism by means of four stages that symbols and objects have progressed through. Stage one is the basic reflection of reality. Here, symbols and objects attempt to create an objective reflection of reality. For example, a chair is made to be sat on and is valuable if it fulfills its purpose. Likewise, a shirt is valuable if it covers your skin and protects you from the elements. The symbols, stories, and myths of our ancestors were an attempt to describe reality as best and objectively as they could, agree with the results or not. A symbol or image of a god was meant to represent an objectively existent force in reality. Here I see a comparison to very early polytheism in the stellar tradition, where we accepted the, obje the objective, dualistic, and spiritual nature of reality, the existence of many gods, and so forth, with very complex systems that understood reality itself as complex. Inherently, this stage can only ever be a, an attempt at metaphysical knowledge about reality at best, but it's an honest attempt, and that's what's absolutely key. An honest, unfiltered attempt at understanding objective reality and reflecting that reality in our ideas, practices, and such. Stage two is the perversion of reality. Here, the relationship between value and objective reality begins to shift. For example, a chair may still serve its primary function, but be more valuable if made with a rare material, or by someone of note, or for someone of great importance, great social importance. There may be no practical difference between the stage one and stage two chairs, and yet the stage two chair is given more value. Symbols, perhaps most famously the serpent, are also twisted, for example, as a means to control people, or even by demonizing all gods and saying there is only one true god. The complexity of reality is ignored in favor of this simple good versus evil breakdown where everything is either godly or demonic. The comparison here is the solar agricultural tradition and especially monotheism. There is still an acceptance of some sort of reality, but that reality is twisted intentionally, whether that to be con to control people, confuse them, or anything of the sort. It's a perversion of reality. Stage three is the pretense of reality. Here we have the appearance of reality, but much more of a detachment from it. The idea that gods are just archetypes or that magic is just psychology, these illustrate stage three very well, along with physicalism at large. People pretend that the physical world is the totality of reality, of which they consider themselves to be the true seekers, but in the end they outright ignore the most important aspects of our reality. Christian nationalism is another illustration of this stage, where leaders outright lie and fabricate history under the pretense of truth, such as the U.S. being founded as a Christian nation. Objects now in stage three mainly have value thanks to materialism and consumerism, not to mention advertising, and the rejection of higher reality makes such things easier to fall for. And finally, there is stage four, which bears no relation to any reality whatsoever. This is what may be called postmodernism, total detachment from reality. A very worrying illustration is the democratization of science, where politics and public opinion now hold as much or more sway as empirical evidence. And strict empiricism or scientism is already stage three since there are so many other forms of knowledge than just empirical knowledge. But the, straight, the stage three individual, of course, pretends that empirical knowledge is the only type of knowledge that's beneficial. Here in stage four, a shirt or chair like the one from stage one may be significantly, significantly less valuable than an identical shirt or chair endorsed by a famous celebrity. So, you know, a shirt's not just valuable because it protects you from the elements, it's valuable because it was made by somebody famous which has no bearing on reality, of course. That's, that's a very postmodern idea that just having a famous person's name on your tag makes something more valuable. There, that adds no objective value to it at all. That's, stage four bears no relation to reality whatsoever. Another example is that we all know politicians lie when they make promises, and yet we always cheer for our favorite one anytime they make one anyways. We just ignore reality and go along with this kind of fake one that we've made up. Our symbols only represent our made up realities now such as watered-down Christian ideology that we see running rampant in polytheistic revival, or modern pop culture fictions and multiverses, for example. Baudrillard gives, the example of stage, gives an example of stage four using Main Street at Disney parks. Not only do we spend more time and money on these fabrications than so-called reality, such as replacing gods on our altars with Disney figures, but our very differentiation between the real world and Disney world is a delusion. Disneyland is part of the so-called real world. There is no inner child to most adults which is in hiding in need of release. Rather, they are very outwardly children, yet still wield great power. The world is childish and run by mental and spiritual children. 
and going to Disneyland to quote unquote, let our inner child out is just a delusion because that inner child is already out. That's why the world is in the absolute shit state that it is in right now is because <laughs> that is the real world. Like this, these children running around and spending money and cutting people in line and doing whatever they want, being rude to other people, that is real life. And there's no difference between it and Disney world. The perfect world of Disney is also still draining your so-called real money which paper money itself belongs to stage three as it has no objective value outside of what we give it. How often do we obsess over the lives and stories of fictional people, such as families and TV shows meant purely as consumer content? I could probably tell you more about the people from the office than I could about my own family history. Even I am guilty of this. Our biggest influencers are literal morons on terrible platforms, platforms which encourage us to pretend our true selves are only the best moments we choose to share online. Again, it's a complete detachment from reality. We just manufacture reality now. It's not actually even attempting to describe objective truth. To these four stages, I propose adding a fifth stage in the 21st century, the replacement of reality. Artificial intelligence, virtual reality, alternate reality. One of the most recent symbols of status at the time of writing this is the new Apple headset, costing thousands of dollars and allowing people to just walk around and exist in a totally manufactured reality, one which will inevitably be shaped by those in positions of power and wealth. The popularity of fake news may also deserve ranking in this new fifth stage, perhaps even things like the popularity of plastic surgery. We just do not give the slightest shit about objective reality or objective value anymore like we did in stage one. It's just manufactured nonsense. And this probably sounds like the most ranty of my video so far, because honestly, it is this postmodernism is the worst thing that is happening to us probably right now. Now, it's important to note that I do not necessarily believe we pass linearly through these stages. For example, there are currently people whose beliefs and practices conform to any one of these four stages, or they fit different stages depending on the context. For instance, I mentioned Christian nationalists who are stage two when it comes to God. They believe objective reality. They're in an objective reality, but that it's twisted to be only one God. But then at the same time, they reject reality and create a pretense of it by saying stuff like America was created as a Christian culture. I think morality is another good way to look at the four stages. And for this, I'll use the modern example of the debate on abortion. In stage one, morality is a quest for objective truth. So for instance, with abortion, we would realize that the issue is objectively complicated, that you can't just say, yes, abortion is right, or yes, abortion is wrong, that there's many variables and it's much more complicated than that. It comes down to individual case by case basis. In stage two, morality is twisted to fit the reality promoted by those in power. So for us, this would be abortion being always wrong. They still believe in objective morality, but twist and simplify that morality to be black and white, like we were talking about with God, godly versus demonic in stage two. Stage three brings us to moral relativism, where abortion is right or wrong depending on who you ask, what culture you were raised in, and so on. There is no objective morality in stage three, but this itself is an objective truth in a way, that there is no objective reality. That's an objective fact to them. This is opposed to second stage monotheists who believe abortion is objectively wrong altogether, or the first stage individuals who know that the topic can be complicated and isn't black and white. Basically for stage three, whatever the culture says is moral is. Whatever morals the relativist has, the stage three individual has, they do not believe them to be more correct than any other morals. Finally, in stage four, postmodernism, what we have now, morality is completely dependent on those in power, such as politicians, corporations, influencers, and so on. Whatever those people say is moral, those who are given social status and value. It's a warped form of moral relativism, really. The stage four individual believes that morals are relative, are relative, but not to culture or anything of the sort. Instead, morals are relative to whatever suits them best at the time, and whatever they are told by authorities of high symbol and object value. They do not believe the values and morals of others are equally valid to theirs, such as in stage three, nor do their actions suggest any belief in a consistent objective morality, warped or otherwise, such as in stages one and two. Instead, postmodern morals are relative to whatever their individual's own pseudo reality is, whatever, whatever is to their benefit, and this itself mainly stems from the aforementioned authorities. And note that someone may be, say, a stage two monotheist when it comes to religion, but stage four on morality and so forth. Again, you don't have to just be one of these stages or, or progress through them linearly. I think the idea of whataboutism is another illustration of moral postmodern manipulation. So this is going to be a big one coming up with this election cycle, but say that a person is telling you how evil the current president of the United States is because they do X. 
you ask this person, what about the fact that your favorite president did X2? Were they also evil? Now, the postmodernist is going to say that you're engaging in whataboutism. They're saying that asking them if they actually think X is evil or if it's just that they don't like the person is fallacious, that it's, it's trying to change the topic. But to one who accepts moral realism in stage one or even stage two, it's immediately clear why the question is valid. The answer determines if the person is truly opposed to X or simply using it against those they don't like, special pleading. Postmodernists simply believe whatever they need or want at the time to support their own biases, not that X is actually immoral. And this is what we see with whataboutism. As I briefly mentioned before, our paper money is another example of stage three, the pretense of reality. The paper money system is entirely theoretical. In reality, the paper we carry around in our wallets is worth very, very little. It's just tied to this conceptual system that, were we to cast it aside, would make all cash meaningless paper. Stage one would be things like being paid in services, sustenance, shelter, useful things, symbols that were thought to impact reality, objective things that all people need. Stage two is illustrated by gold, or things like silver. We give it meaning beyond what it has, but it's still a real thing with a limited amount of it in the world. We cannot just get trillions in debt by printing gold like we can with stage three cash. Stage three, of course, paper money. And for stage four and on, I would say that the best examples for this are either NFTs and Bitcoins or even just likes, views and upvotes. I mean, these literally end up leading to paper money in most cases in our days, the way the so social media and the Internet's working now. So I'd say that all of them qualify, just absolutely meaningless things that are even more meaningless than paper money <laughs> and um, are becoming treated you know, they're more important than money. They're more important than gold. They're even more important than every necessary thing. Like this is what people are going for in life because reality has just been completely abandoned. Social media also gives us insight into the world of stage four postmodernism. All the big name forums and social media platforms, as well as many smaller ones, are oversaturated with advertisements, these new religious symbols and their new valuable objects to the point where advertisers choose which platforms or outlets survive and which crash and burn. Whole sites wield the power to silence dissenters of whichever ideology they find appealing. And do not delude yourself into believing that this is only a one-sided issue. This is something that everybody is happily doing these days. In many cases, people are extremely limited in the number of characters they can use at once, making true discourse impossible. People are living entirely fake lives to instill jealousy in others, who then go on to lie to themselves and others as well. And groupthink is encouraged through voting systems which create, which create hive minds and drive out any independent thought, such as Reddit. All these fit with Baudrillard's fourth stage. None of this is reality. Consumerism is objectively less valuable than individuation and freedom. It's not a valid way to live life. It only wastes life, time, and resources. Human thought is not limited by a character count. This does not describe reality in any way. Instead, creating a new reality where any idea longer than a few sentences is considered a word salad and cannot hold one's attention. There are fewer and fewer great thinkers, and they are not the ones being heard and viewed, getting likes and upvotes. The endless, manufactured, touched-up selfies, vacations wasted taking pictures instead of enjoying, time lost in the imagery rather than the real events, such as at concerts, this is not objective reality. It not only rejects and ignores reality, but twists and perverse, perverts it, replacing it with a manufactured and simulated one. Modern cancel culture is another unfortunate offspring of postmodern thought. Due to the power ahead and used by the creators and maintainers of these fourth-stage images and objects, Reality is now defined by such entities. For example, a famous actor was fired from all his roles, including a massive franchise, on mere accusations that he was abusive, before the crimes were even brought to court, where it turned out things were not so clear-cut. And if something like this can happen to a rich, beloved movie star, imagine what could happen to just a random citizen. I'm not suggesting you feel bad for a billionaire who helps fabricate reality, nor do I believe we have a great and trustworthy justice system in place. All I want to illustrate here is how a mere accusation led to guilt and punishment because corporations and the most popular political parties said the individual was guilty and culture followed blindly before it even reached the courts at all. Even in cases where someone ends up being guilty, they cannot be found guilty before investigation and judgment. But this does not matter in a world where reality is whatever is most popular at the time. Now, all forms of media contribute to this. There is no longer any reality in culture outside of the images and reality created for us, created to distract us from this disturbing rejection of reality. Games, shows, movies, children's content, fiction and nonfiction, governments, news outlets. 
Not every single individual instance of these may be wholly negative, but the positive ones are becoming more and more rare. I found an interesting source of philosophy on this matter in the poetry of Jim Morrison, famously known as the Singer of the Doors, whose father was all too familiar with the fabrication of reality, which helped lead us into the Vietnam War. Morrison wrote about how the powers that be use content from films to museums where we simulate history and make it fit our own understanding of history and everything in between to blind citizens to their power over us, our values, and even our meanings regarding life. He feared that humans had become simple spectators, staring blankly into the screen, letting it write their reality for them. He even, in my opinion, projected the meta nature of our modern culture, where everything has become self-referential, filled with cameos and Easter eggs, dead actors resurrected and old ones de-aged, because media-created re reality is now the only reality. All it can reference is itself, lest it shatter the illusion or acknowledge reality. Just look at how our current culture cannot even create new content, just remakes, sequels, shared universes, and so on. To quote Morrison, quote, there are no longer dancers, the possessed. The cleavage of men into actor and spectators is the central fact of our time. We are obsessed with heroes who live for us and whom we punish. If all the radios and televisions were deprived of their sources of power, all books and paintings burned tomorrow, all shows and cinemas closed, all the arts of vicarious existence, dot, 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 we are content with the given and sensation's quest. We have been metamorphosized from a mad body dancing on hillsides to a pair of eyes staring in the dark." Unquote. Another great example of postmodernism, I believe, is the idea of secularism, that we can separate the public from the religious, or that there are actually people who have no religion whatsoever. This rejects the reality that religion applies to many aspects of life, that someone who is non-theistic and simply quote-unquote or simply quote-unquote spiritual still is often religious. For example, we can look to sports, where all sorts of weird rituals and ceremonies take place, place that have nothing to do with the layman understanding of religion, gods, the divine, and so on, but are studied as such by religious scholars nonetheless. It can even tie back to the Disneyland example, such as how we pretend America is a secular country, when we're really being controlled by Christian nationalists. Or we delude ourselves into thinking that the hateful atheism of France or places like the USSR before it is somehow not its own form of religion. In stage one, we recognized that there was no separating the spiritual and religious from daily life. Stage two kept this mostly in place, but twisted it to fit monotheism. It was not until stage three that this really changed to keeping religions quote unquote private. And stage four, four flips the whole thing on its head to where the state and corporations have essentially become God and the gods and myths have become fantasy. Unfortunately, postmodernism has even seeped into the Western left-hand path to a great extent. For example, we see this with the identif identification of the Christian invented Satan being associated with beings that have no correlation to him. The left-hand path leader who says that the devil is Set or the serpent or Prometheus or any other such deity is placing objective reality on the back burner in favor of a modern cultural meme, that all these beings are Satan, despite their histories, characteristics, mythologies, etc., despite the very fact that Satan was an invention of Christianity and not one of our polytheistic gods. It is postmodernism which allows certain groups from the late 1900s to claim absurd things like being the first and only Satanists, with no regard for objective reality, or which allows organizations to claim the title of romantic Satanists when their values and acts fly in the face of that literary movement. It's why people who think they are on the Western left-hand path can still fall for things like physicalism against all reason and evidence. Is how occultists can create completely made up identities for themselves that, even after being exposed as fraudulent, are still parroted blindly by their followers. And in a wider sense, it applies to modern polytheism overall, where new age fluff bunny occultists come in changing polytheism to monotheism or emanationism, or saying that all male and female goddesses are just a manifestation of the god and goddess. There is no escaping this postmodern irrationality anymore in our world. Our symbols of the divine, of deeper spiritual meanings and truth, of a reality beyond this material reality, have all been replaced with corporate logos, meme templates, and Easter eggs. Like me, many others also have altars in every room of the house. Their altars are simp simply shrines to brands, consumer content, companies, political parties, famous actors, pop dolls, movies, I don't like literally anything but spirituality of the gods or yourself or your family or anything that matters, it's just all this consumer shit. The utility of an object no longer defines it, but instead it is the fabricated social status a thing is supposed to create, such as an uncomfortable designer chair being 10 times the cost of a more practical one. If your car can reliably get you from place to place, but isn't sporting the right hood ornament or a fresh coat of paint, 
or all the fancy add-ons in a high floor price, then the object is simply not seen as valuable as a car that has all these things. And unfortunately, by extent, the individual who owns that car is therefore seen as less valuable. They're defined by their objects. Two identical shirts can vary in price by hundreds of dollars based solely on the name printed inside the tag. Just think about that for a minute. All of these values are entirely manufactured and completely detached from any sort of objective reality. Perhaps worst of all is that people and objects have become harder to tell apart and people are becoming defined by their objects. As best exemplified with celebrities. These are fake people with false personalities who are supposed to see as the ideal human beings. All their flaws are edited and filtered out and we are con then condemned for not being on par with them. With these rich, perfect people who we never even see their actual lives because it's just, we only see what's curated for us, this fabricated reality. To postmodern companies, the individual is literally just an object to be used as a means to an end, a cog in the machine rather than an individual with needs, goals, drives, and so on. They are literally just an object for companies, not a person, not a human being. Politicians are themselves celebrities now, and I do not only mean literal actors running for office, but rather that people cheer for these people like they do a rock star. They consume their media like it's a drug and defend them as if the politician was their favorite comic book character. And what gives these politicians and celebrities their power? In association with the new system of symbols and objects of value, the system which disregards reality altogether in order to encourage things like consumerism and obedience. Postmodernism has influence over almost every aspect of our lives. It encourages people to believe any fleeting thing they want or are told to want is a foremost importance of or value. It allows constant advertising to empty us of any inconvenient meaning or value and fill the void with consumerism and material shit, or to fill it with work lives that are ultimately pointless and amount to nothing more than some conceptual material wage with paper money itself not even being real and, you know, debit card money not even being a real thing that exists. Like we're not talking about gold or even necessities, like pay somebody in freaking food for God's sakes, you know, like that's what people need is not paper. The value of objects defines and takes over the value of the individual. A disregard for objective reality means a disregard for the scientific method itself even, allowing science to become a process of authoritarianism or democracy at best, a process of media propaganda rather than a quest for truth. And even when we accept proper science, most people end up being empiricists, like they don't go past stage three. They think that the only kind of knowledge is what you can get from scientific study, that no other kind of knowledge exists or matters. Whatever facts benefit the high object value people and the symbols they associate with are true at the time, and the facts which do not are false, and these are able to be changed at the drop of a hat. In conclusion, postmodernism is clearly the natural out outcome of our move from profound reality to a fabricated simulation of reality created to control, stifle, and subdue human beings. In immoral and dangerous metaphysics, too blind to see that without any objective reality, nobody can be correct, including themselves. And I feel like once you study kind of what Baudrillard was saying, and you look at what's going on in the world, just look at everything that you have in your house or every content you consume or any posts you see online and look for these things and you'll see them all over the place. We are rapidly descending through stage four into stage five here. And it's, I honestly think that this might be like the biggest central problem we have right now. Like this is the cause of all the shit that's happening and why our world is falling apart is because we don't even give a shit about reality anymore. We're just care about whatever we're told, whatever fits at the moment. Reality just changes on the fly to be whatever it needs to be for those of high symbol object value. And that's just absolutely horrible. And we need to be aware of this and strive for change, in my opinion. Anyways, this was definitely more of a rant than any of the videos, but I thank you for listening and I will see you next time.